A Project of Oral History of Bonneville County, Idaho. This tape is being done on this 15th day of December, 1986, and is taped for and in behalf of the Bonneville County Historical Society by Joe Cruz and Harold Forbush. <clears throat> We're pleased this sunny afternoon on the 15th day of December 1986 to be in the home of Mr. and Mrs. Calvin and Mary Sweeney McMurtry. Now you spell that last name M-C-M-U-R-T-R-E-Y and this is in the Antelope area yes. of Bonneville County. Mm -hmm. That would be, what, the northeast part of the county. Is that right, Joe? Yes. Not of the county, it isn't. Yes, it well, yeah. Uh, kind of the northeast yeah, part of the county, of Bonneville County. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we um, feel real grateful to these people for um, allowing us to visit with them this very sunny afternoon, maybe about four or five inches of snow, of that white stuff on the ground, but uh, a very wonderful open November and December, December, as we approach the so-called winter season, which is only a week away, the 21st of, of December. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to ask you, Mrs. McMurtry, first, will you state your full name? Mary Catherine Sweeney McMurtry. And where were you born and when? Idaho Falls, uh, March 13, 1909, in Idaho Falls. Okay. And tell me and share with us briefly something of the Sweeney surname of which you're a member of that family. Well, my dad and his six brothers and sisters immigrated from Cary County, Ireland landed in Boston, and my dad came out here years ago to Butte, Montana, and his brother Ed came with him, and they had a store, a grocery store and a dry goods store in Butte. It was there that he took out his citizenship papers. Can you guess about what no? this period this would have been? Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, before, it, it was before 1900. I imagine. Yeah. I never knew. See, I, he was killed when I was only two. I see. Okay. And then, and then he uh, sold the store. My uncle Ed went uh, down to Weezer, down there, and tried to farm an apple farmer. He didn't have much success. Then he went into Spokane and lived. He became county commissioner and lived there for years. And my dad came to Idaho Falls and uh, opened up a, a brewery. The Roger Brothers used to have out there their house. That was our brewery with John Brandt. And he opened a saloon on Broadway. Now that's where... Where the state hardware is now. I see. And and um, what brothers, who, who you were saying the... Uh, Uncle Ed went back no, to school. No, 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 Roger Brothers. They had... A, they, they finally used it till they built the new building. And that was Roger Brothers Seed House? Or, uh, afterwards, long afterwards. Long afterwards. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And that. And John Brandt died. My dad died in 1912, and John Brandt died in 1911 of a heart attack. He's buried out to Rosa Cemetery. He was a partner? Yeah, John, John Brandt. Mm -hmm. In the business? Yes, with my dad. Saloon business on Broadway. And then my dad decided to build a hotel where Denning Showcase is. And they started it. And he borrowed money from J.K. Mullen of Denver, Colorado. He was a very wealthy uh, flower man. And uh, he and old Charlie Dowd went up to look at the construction. That's and probably D-O-W-D. Dowd, D-O-W-D. Uh -huh. Charlie Dowd. And they went up on the scaffolding, and they shouldn't have done it. And he was kneeling down, and Charlie was standing up, and he fell and broke his back. My dad did. And he lived for three weeks. They sent for Dr. Hausman of Salt Lake hospital Holy the cross and Doc Klein was just a young doctor there but he only lasted three weeks 
He was hurt on my birthday and died on my bed of ice April 14th, 1912. Well, they sent for Dr. Klein to come from... No, no, Dr. Hausmer oh. was in Holy Cross. He came. Uh, Dr. Dr. Klein, Dr. Klein was already here. Here in Idaho Falls. Of course, yes. they couldn't do anything to save him in those days. Mm -hmm. And he left it. My mother, she was only about 27. Mike was three years old. I was two, and Dave was five months. No, yeah. they could have saved him. Yes. And yes, now, Uncle Dan, in the meanwhile, had came, come now, out. Now, was he younger or older? Younger. Than he was younger he than your father. He came out. He stayed with my Aunt Mary back in Boston. He came out, and he was a builder, brick man. He earned his trade in Ireland. And my dad used to go his bonds, and he built a lot of buildings, schools, up around Drummond and St. Anthony and around. That sounds weird. You uh, <laughs> you should tell us, Mary, now, um, something about your Uncle Dan. Um, was he married when he came out? Oh, no. He he was a single man. Oh, yeah, he when was he, about 32 years old. When he came to Idaho Falls. Oh, uh -huh. yes. And um, do you recall maybe the first public building that he constructed in, in the Idaho Falls area? I don't know. I think he built the old CWM. And he also built all that grave thing back of the pancake house. At, uh, you know, the, uh, back there, Demonte, there's a damn wall back there. The Demonte uh, Warehouse, you know. The Monty White's uh, used to be the skidoo. No, 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 no. It wasn't back of the pancake house. You notice that gray lava rock? All that we, we built, Dan like built that for Dan Wood. Yeah. And yeah. they used that for Del Monte Produce and Warehouse. Used that. Uncle Dan built that for Gibb. He did all the Gibb rights building for him. Uh, you remember that, Gilbert Wright. Okay, now the consolid that. the first consolidated wagon and machine. I think Uncle Dan built it for Gibb. Was, See, that was a Mormon church <clears throat> investment, CWM. That came from Salt Lake. Yes. And I think they first was located uh, at Park Avenue maybe and uh, C. No, it was down Broadway mm. on this side. It was Broadway and Park? On the north yeah. side of Broadway, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. On the north side of Broadway. It was, it was beyond where Baker had his... Uh, China shop, you know. Kind now, of the shop first J.C. Penney store was in that area. I don't remember that. But my dad bought, what? I was going to tell you about my dad. He bought the building, original buildings on Broadway, where the Ida Falls Electric, from Samsel, George Samsel bought them. And then he remodeled, and then he added on. He had the, uh, he sold the liquor, closed down the, his saloon. And uh, Bachman from Salt, oh, Walt Bachman came from Ogden, and he leased it. Out of Falls Electric, and upstairs they had Mrs. Gray's rooming house. And over here was Scott's bookstore. George Scott leased from my dad. And so did Walter Bachman, one of the oldest continuous rented buildings in the Idaho Falls. Mm -hmm. Continuously rented. And now, what building would that be today? Well, well, it's the state hardware. Then they had a fire. They had two fires. They had a fire, a first one, there was a drugstore on the corner where, right where that uh, Jewish store used to be, and it burned part of it. And then they had a, Dan Botman said, <laughs> set it on fire, and they burned it down. And Dan did the remodeling of it, and then I rebuilt it up and leased it to State Hardware. Because I, I bought a new TV and saw my building burn, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> that was quite a, <laughs> well, a happy event. Now, I... I, I'm getting you mixed up. No, I understand that that Dan, as you indicated, yeah. built several public yeah. buildings. Oh yeah, he built the uh, what, what else? Idaho Falls Original Library, that Carnegie Endowed Library, that's a historical society. Okay. And he built the Methodist Church. Now that was. Do, do, do we know when that was built? We you should, should have find a date out. on that. Joe Marker ought to know. He built yeah. it and he remodeled it. Carnegie and Dodd Library. Well, there's a date, all right. Yeah. But I don't know what it uh -huh. is. Could have been as early as 1907. Yes, it could have been. And then he built the Methodist Church, and he remodeled that out of brick. He, he killed it out by Rigby. Do you know where the material came from that Methodist Church? That rock? No, you know? I don't. And then he built the Ole Bell Junior High. And it's uh, vacated. Huh? Billy Rigby owns that, I understand. And that. Now, the Methodist Church you're speaking about is the one that is still in use today. It's a still, it's a historical building. Uh, to the east of the, the, to the, the, east of the old the museum. library. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. And uh, now I think you mentioned that he built the first high school in Idaho Falls. Well, I don't know whether Dan did. He might have had a contract or something connected with that. I'm not quite sure. 
See, I went away to school when I was 10, and I didn't uh, come back till I got out of school. In that. Now, <clears throat> in my research, I learned that uh, on the 19th of April, 1920, a contract was let to Dan Sweeney for the construction of the, of the superstructure of the LDS Hospital that was being built on mm -hmm. Western Avenue or, you know, Memorial yeah, Drive. Yeah. Now, as indicated, that was the 19th of April, 1920. Mm -hmm. um, other buildings, you recall, that he, you well, know, that I, he, he, built. he did the addition on the post office. Now, whether he had a subcontract for that post office, Now, that I would be know. on C Street? Yeah. No, no, that post office is on Park Avenue. Or on Park Avenue, isn't no, it? No, I don't know yeah. whether Dan... But a lot of that architect looks just like Dan's, if you check those old buildings. His his way of doing things. Put his mark on you can tell. He did do the remodeling. And then also he rebuilt onto the bus depot. That made him mad. He wanted to tear it down building. No one put the pole in <laughs> He built the addition on the old bus building. What, Which, what, what made him mad? What was because he? he said it was... Trash. He wanted to build a new one. He was a, a brick man. That was his trade. Well, just to show you how good a person he was, he went and got a tombstone for my dad and plunked it in the middle of the graves, which was awful. We lost a lot of graves. He went right in the middle, the old damned Irishman. <laughs> when my mother died, they wanted to move it. She's buried out at Rose Hill. And they, they said, well, they could move it. And they said, who put it in? They said, Dan Sweeney, he says, my God, we left to move it if he put it in. He put so much brick <laughs> work in that under so man. He said, no, don't even consider it. He said, we can move it if we want to. <laughs> well, you've seen his own tombstone. Haven't you, haven't you seen him in Ross Hill dance? He built, put that up himself before he died. Now he that's it. in the Rose Hill. Hill. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now it's what um, the, uh, the um, caption on the stone is, Dan Sweeney. Sweeney. Uh -huh. Does it say heads, contractor or anything no, like no, that? No, no, he, he belonged to the. Uh, uh, what lodge did he belong to? Oddfellows. He was an Oddfellow. Oddfellow. Odd and see. he belonged to the Elks Lodge. Uncle Dan. See, my dad was an Eagle, a Charter Eagle, but they never had an Elks Lodge. See, Nels Porter was the first to, uh, what do you call it, Grand Press? Yeah, of the Elks. Old, old Nels Porter there had his hotel in Broadway mm -hmm. and that. But uh, no, Uncle Dan built a lot of, he built a lot of schools that I didn't know, I wasn't aware of. He did a lot of building. And when they put up Rogers Hotel, you know, B.M. Rogers, mm -hmm. he, Dan would go down there and argue with him. He says, you cheap so-and-so, at least you could do is put up a good building. <laughs> anything he did, it had to Well, who put that building up? I don't know. Uncle but Dan anyway, was you're, mad about it. Your, your Uncle Dan felt that it was inferior, inferior and quality was and workmanship. That was his pride and joy to be. He was a very, very competent builder. And competent. How about some of the other hotels? Did he have Bonneville? Bonneville? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you, there's a lot of this stuff. I do know about the library, and I do know about the church in Bell. I do know about that. And Gib Wright. I know he did all Gibbs building and that. Now, did your did your uncle die as a married man? Uh, yes, he married he, Hazel Hops. <coughs> Hazel Hops. Uh huh. Told Hops is. Uh, sister. Do you remember Hazel Hopps? H O P P S. H O P S. H O P S. You, did you I, know Larry Hopps? I didn't know him? any of them, but I remember oh, the name uh -huh. being mentioned a uh, lot. Well, he he married late in life, Uncle Dan did. He just never got married till. Late. Now, were you reared pretty much in the Idaho Falls area, and if so? Did you attend the elementary schools there in Idaho Falls? I spent one year at the Central School, and Miss Abelson was my teacher. I went up to high school. I was about six years old, and at ten, ten years, I went to the Sisters School Academy up in Northern Idaho and graduated. Stayed there seven years and graduated from high school. And then, of course, I came home summers mm -hmm. once in a while. But I knew all those people. I grew up with the town in that. Mm -hmm. Dave stayed there. Dave graduated from Iowa Falls. Now, Dave is a brother. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. passed away. Now, um, then after you had come home uh, from the seven years at the at the school up in northern Idaho, uh, did you pursue further your education? Yes, I went to St. Mary of the Wasatch, freshman in college. 
And then I went that's to, in Salt Lake uh -huh, City. And then I it? went to ISU, and they just made it the Southern Branch. I only had it two years ago. And then I transferred to Berkeley and went to Berkeley. And then I taught a year up to West Bank and two years here on Antelope. Now, where's West Bank? Yeah. Now, West where is Bank. that? There is well, it. You don't cross the bridge. Up there where Ed Daniels lives in the hills. It's on the north don't side. Don't you of the know river. that? Yeah. I, 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 knew, but I couldn't remember where it was. Ed Daniels. But that was the school on the north side. Yeah, I had 12 kids. It's on, the, it's on the south. On the south side. Yeah, they call it here. West Bank. They call it West Now, Bank. is that within Bonneville County? Oh, yes. It goes yes. up the Wyoming yeah, line, Bonneville. you know. About how many miles up the river from here is it? Well, uh, 15. I used to ride the saddle horse, come down Friday nights, and stay here with Cal's family, and then ride up. What Sunday families? Night. What I families? Well, there was the Daniels. Daniel's family, and there was uh, George Weeks's family, and her and Joe Jones's family, and the Clark family. Whispering in. And and then there was uh, Clifford Marshall. I had him. Mm -hmm. So they homestead. What nothing. years were those, oh, uh, Mary? Shame on you, asking she me back like that. She always went to that. school. Now let's see. Wait a minute. Beautiful's a lot older and bigger than she was. That's for damn. Sure. Between twenty nine and thirty, I taught her. Twenty nine, thirty. What gee? Oh. I wasn't very big. <laughs> now, had you you were married at that time? No. Oh, you no, were I got still married after I talked. This to man him. here was loaning you his saddle horse. Well, yes, I used to go to, up to well, teach, sure. and uh, I had to have and know. all this um, hanky pankying type of thing went on before you were married. <laughs> no, okay. I came here instead. Well, no, I, I, did, I knew him I, when I was 15 and married him when I was 23. That okay. gave me plenty of time I, I wanted to sight. insert that because I... I got my second sight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now this takes she us to... the long enough, she should have known better. Yeah, she should have. have known better. <laughs> yeah. The point is, she was a smart woman because she married you. <laughs> <laughs> I said I should have got my second sight two weeks later. Now, <laughs> at this point, we would like to have uh, a few questions uh, responded to by uh, Mr. McMurtry. Can you tell me your full name? Calvin Lewis. And where were you born and when? Born in Anna Sidable. And when? October 24th, well, 1908. I was born in 1908, so will that tell you? In 1908. <clears throat> okay. Now, who was your father? Jim Henry McMurtry. <laughs> and he had he brought his family from someplace to uh, to um, Manan? Annis. Annis. Uh, you know, just prior to your birth, or had it been a quite a while before you were born? Go ahead. Okay. Just, just comment that your father had born in Alabama and came west. Well, my father was born in Alabama and came west. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was born. You want me? Yes, uh huh. I was born in Annis, Idaho. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we've already learned that uh, this young lady, as a school teacher after being acquainted with you for some five years, I believe, uh, married you. And can you tell me the date either one of you answer when you were married? 23rd of August, 1932. Okay. And did you establish your home up here in Antelope at that time? Mm-hmm. After Black Canyon Country, we call it. Okay. Now, Calvin, uh, had you ranched, been ranching up here in this in this area? prior to 1932? Did you farm? Sure you did. Well, yes, I farmed up here. Has it been five years? I started out farming when I was big enough to walk. <laughs> Tell me a little about the farm. What kind of a ranch was it? What kind of a operation did you have? Give out horses and <laughs> wheat. Well, it was all done with horses. <clears throat> We raised the feed for the horses and raised grain. That's all. That's about all we had to sell was grain once a year for what we would buy. But what few things we bought was immaterial, really. What neighbors 
do you recall in in this immediate area in 1932 oh, or earlier? This this country was thrown open for homesteading. That's how everybody got here. Dry farming oh, land. Okay. This yeah. land was thrown open for homesteads mm -hmm. in the Homestead Act. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, you could only get a, a 160 acres or an extended homestead was 320. So there was p uh, families on ever, usually ever 80 to 160 acres of land here. So we had the communities here. Good hell, we had a school over here. And and this community was called Antelope? Uh -huh. Right. And the school was called Antelope. Antelope yeah. School uh -huh. District. School District. Number 16, it's wrote right on the building. I even mm -hmm. seen it there. Two that sat right alongside of uh, Antelope Creek? Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. over here. Out in the flat. In fact, uh -huh. that's one reason my dad fucked. This was the only little homestead he, he could get was 48 acres here. So us kids could walk to school. He didn't have to haul us or nothing. We walked to school. So this place that you're on now was uh, part of the original it's homestead? The homestead yes. It is. Uh -huh. yeah. About what date was it homesteaded? Oh, gosh. Cal? Mm -hmm. yeah. About nineteen thirty. Sure that out. How about nineteen thirteen? It'd probably be down there on the records if you uh -huh. talk to us. That's uh, that's one date when I know that a lot of a lot of this country was open. Well, well it was open for homestead. When it was opened, it was he open. He came up from Anderson. Uh -huh. He worked for for a company in Cody building ditches. They're still there, irrigation ditches. Talk a little louder. Say what you're saying, but just a little louder. Oh. Well, he, he left Utah and took his family and went into Cody, Wyoming. He had a job with his team of horses and slip scrapers, and they built ditches, irrigation ditches. Well, they built railroads, everything. Yeah. Any kind of grading was done with a team of horses and a slip scraper. And he used to haul supplies from Cody into Laurel. That was in Montana. Over now, there. we're talking about whom? Cal's dad. Cal's dad. Uh -huh. And your father's name was? Calvin, James Henry. James, James Henry, Henry McMurtry. He McMurtry. emphasized that. They'd call him James this and James that, but he said, my name is James Henry. He got a pair of shoes for <laughs> name being right named now. After. Say, my name was James Henry. <laughs> <laughs> and he was a contractor of, of building... No, no, he just went out and got jobs. Just, just jobs. Just, just jobs. like anybody did I see. in those days. But he did a lot of with a team and, yeah. and scraper. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was very much employed and, and busily engaged. You know, if you only know it, it it's just uh, awful surprising how many of these big canals, ditches, everything else was built with a team of horses and a scraper. That's well, the way you, they you were know, built. Feeder, feeder down here, Joe. You mm -hmm. read that about You can't believe that. You think they, they do it with, because we got equipment to do that with today. No, it was... That was done with a slip scraper and a team of horses. Right. Yeah. Well, then they, they hauled that lumber the logs down from the river flowed them down. Where, where, uh, found them. That was where did the Kelly Dam? Where did they come from? From up the river? I don't know. Well, I've got the. Haven't you got that book that the Relief Society put out about the irrigation system? It's fabulous. Pictures and everybody that worked on it, the pools and the Cramers mm -hmm. and oh, everybody. History for their water life. For they, it's the first irrigation system outside of Phoenix. In modern time, outside the Indians developed to their own, you know, around Phoenix. You know, if you want to go over the banks over oh, here to had somebody to take you so you know, this country, uh, there, there was timber cut all along the banks of the river. The old stumps and the old evidence is there. How long ago that's been, I don't know. It's been a long time. Did you have to do a lot of clearing of your oh. homestead oh, before yeah. you could plant? Yes. What was it... Uh, Sagebrush or was it timberland? Well, it was either sagebrush or both. Or timber of every kind. How about how, how about uh, <clears throat> choke cherry and yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 a lot of cherry. yeah Sar Sar Sarvis Sar berry. Yeah. They said they could do an acre. Quake and ash, quake and ash, lots of quake ash. Oh boy, quake aspens. But the soil was good once it uh, was cleared of the oh. foliage, yes, and vegetation. Was, of course, there was different kind of soils. It, there was difference in it. I'll put it that way. Now, choke cherry, sarvisberry soil was the best. Very good. You take these Quaker trees that we call quaking ass, mm -hmm. that soil wasn't so good. It took years before that really come out of it and build up to where it was better. 
did you have any real good means, uh, Calvin, at that time of of adding to the fertility of of the soil? No. Only manure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, well, but your your cattle were kind of limited, weren't well, they? So you there didn't. Well, enough of them to build that soil. Right, that's for right. Short. Yeah. Was there any big uh, cattle operations on Antelope at that time, before the homesteaders that you know of? I don't know. Not any big ones, no. Well, didn't Conrad have sheep? <clears throat> Con had sheep. You know, all these things happened. Uh, you you get back to where I try to think about it. These ha happened like that has in a lot of other places. There'd be a cattleman maybe come in and he would have people working for him, cowboys. They would homestead and he would buy their homestead out. That's how they got that big, some of them, you know, got pretty good sized. They got cattle. some of their employees. To right, they, they got their they employees land. Yeah. But you can't. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's another question, I th and thanks for uh, calling it to my attention. You know, as, as people commence to settle a, a given and establish a community, yeah, people commence to pass away, little children or older people. Did they establish rather early uh, a cemetery? Yeah. Uh, where is it located from your place? Right up here. It's fenced. See, they had a Mormon church and it was called the Melba Ward. It was affiliated with Rigby. They had a ward here, everything. Melba. Was it a ward or a branch? It was, it was a, a ward. It was no. a Melba branch. Ward. M E L B A? Uh huh. A Melba branch, uh -huh. or ward. Uh huh. Okay, and near that ward house, I guess, was a the cemetery? No, no. They oh, it was right there by the cemetery. It was all oh. laid out. Ten acres of cemetery there. I see. It belonged to the church, and finally, when after the thing all broke up and they moved away a lot of people then they kept two acres of that cemetery there's supposed to be two acres now of cemetery up there his grandpa's buried there grandpa johnson on your mother's side mm -hmm. yes i see he was right from denmark um is the cemetery maintained at all it is uh, now in 1986. at one time they Got a bug in their ear, and they moved the people out of that cemetery. A lot of them. A lot of people were moved out of that. Where did a they take them? Buried there. To Rigby and, and They Rigby. took them to various other places and buried them again. I mm -hmm. see. But they moved them out of that cemetery, and they never even had decency enough to fill the holes up and take care of it. They didn't do that either. That's a wheeler. They just went to the hell. McDonald's moved them out. Hmm. Well, finally, yeah. then the, the Boy Scouts and... I think the Boy Scouts, wasn't it? The Boy Scouts that came up here and spent some time anyhow. They fenced it. They filled the darn holes all up in there and smoothed it out. They had an old tractor and a few little things to work with. Not elaborate, but a few things. But anyhow, they cleaned that cemetery. But Cal's dad's got a headboard that Jack Beasley burned in with a brand, and they took a picture of it a long time ago, and you can read it. His, his grandpa's when he died and when he was born up there it's just made out of wood are there any um yes, heads, uh, headstones yeah. that There's are some parks made have of one Har parks is his lost there's a little boy. bit left there yeah. i am mm. not going to say you see they roped us in on the uh, shelton cemetery they wanted our tax money and they were supposed to take the tax money and in the meantime maintain this but they mm. always forget just like they wrote they did in clean it up a little up here and yeah. smooth it up the <laughs> boy scouts and some of the Kids like from that that church or something now more. the the school and the church has long since ceased to be used. Right. Oh yes, the old many Shannon many years. Bought it, remember? Harry Shannon bought the schoolhouse, and he um, it and tore it down. Is all of the properties that were homesteaded and um, cleared of brush and vegetation and so forth is all that property still under production? Yes. Of course, it's uh, changed hands. They've right, and it's all maybe country. one man owns. A thousand acres right. or so. Well, if you this taped interview will be continued on side two of this tape. How many? A good neighbor. How about the?